say is, he actually does our uh, Mere Christianity Bible study, and he's very good in um, explaining that stuff and helping us um, grow together, especially in, in the uh, field of kind of apologetics and, and different things. So he's very, very uh, open, and he does, he's very uh, humble at the same time with uh, the stupid questions we ask him. Uh, so we do, we do, we do appreciate his time, and he, he does that like out of his own good heart. So and he spends a uh, good time with us, and um, and he he works for food. That's what he's saying. <laughs> so anything else that I missed? That's good. Okay, that's cool. So that's Peter, good. thank you, best. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's actually he he misspoke though when he said I uh, do it out of my own time. The Mere Christianity Bible Study. Um, Dunkin' Donuts coffee and Dunkachinos are <laughs> consistently provided, and pizza lately. Yeah. So, but I would come even if it was just the Dunkachinos. Um, <laughs> there's one more thing I was gonna say. What was it? What was he said, Peter? Uh, I forget. It'll come back. I'm on low sleep, so if I do doze off while I'm speaking, someone please just nudge me or something and say, "Hey, wake up! Is he narcoleptic?" Um, when we were talking about tonight. And topic like what to do, um, what to focus on. We were batting around different ideas. When I say we, I mean uh, all the people who are showing up to the the C.S. Lewis Bible study. And any any of you who are invited. Uh, we're going through mere Christianity. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Uh, when Ben said apologetics, uh, sometimes I'm saying oh, too many times. Sometimes that word gets confused or is not really clear. Uh, how many of you have not heard that term before? Say, Christian apologetics. Has anyone not heard? Like, let me ask a question to embarrass people. Raise your hand if you have not heard this term. Um, if that's the case, if you have not heard that term, or uh, sometimes people say, Christian apologetics, does that mean you're apologizing for being a Christian? Like, it's like they think it's like a clever. And it, all it just means, it's an old Greek word, apologetics, which means to give a reason or a defense. So <clears throat> it's making a case, a positive case, for the truth of Christianity, while also at the same time answering the tough questions that we all have to deal with, uh, from people that we know that don't believe, to even the doubts that we struggle with. And so that's um, why we're going through C.S. Lewis uh, right now, because he is, he was considered by many the top, or just one of the great apologists of the 20th century. So it's a little plug for, for our Bible study there. Uh, when we talked about, and I'm going back now, to the topic for tonight, we landed upon happiness. And um, we're going to show for an hour the Will Smith movie, <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness. Now, that is a good movie, and we're not going to watch it tonight. But here's the thing. Here's, here's the reason why, well, one of the reasons why we're doing happiness is because that word, that idea, has, is such a high premium for so many people. So much has been written in philosophy and in religion on the idea of happiness. You see? He agrees. Thank you. Uh, can I get an amen? Um, in fact, think about this. Think about most things we do in our life. If we, if we follow the trail and ask ourselves, why are we doing it? Oftentimes it leads to that, so I can be happy. Um, now bear with me here for a second because I'm going to unpack this and then we're going to you know, talk in, amongst in our groups. I did this in uh, my class a couple weeks ago. I said to my students, okay, why are you in school? I said, just role play with me. And they said, uh, you know, to graduate, to get a degree. Why do you want to get a degree? To get a job. Why do you want to get a job? And we went along that trail to buy a house, to have a family. And then ultimately, when I kept asking why, 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 it just came to the point where they said, so we can be happy. And then, do you notice if you ask, why do you want to be happy? It's almost like a, well, like, duh. I mean, what's the other choice? No, I'd rather be miserable. That's what I really would rather have. In other words, a lot of things are a means to an end to happiness. Now, I'm, this might be kind of shocking, but bear with me here. I would argue that's even true for the Christian. And, but I'm going to argue, or we're going to discuss, that that is not a bad thing. But here's the key to that. What do we mean when we say happiness? That's going to be the key tonight. 
couple things. First of all, that's what we're going to discuss tonight. The, the, the biblical view, the Christian worldview, as it relates to happiness. Number one. Number two, we'll talk about first, oh, I, well, I'll say it this way. We'll compare and contrast it to what the world says about happiness. And whether it's from movies or t television, books, magazines, Oprah, whomever, whatever, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll open up with that and say, well, what's the distinction there? What, is there any difference? Are there any similarities? Is there any overlap? Um, so that's going to be the focus for tonight, the, the, the topic of happiness, because that's an important thing for many of us, if not, I dare say, all of us. Uh, a couple more quick disclaimers. Number one, I do not stand up here as someone who is saying, what I'm about to tell you, I've got this all down pat. I have this mastered in my life. Now you should be like me. I am not up here like that. No, if anyone needs to hear this, it's as much myself as anyone in here. I wouldn't even doubt it if many of you have more or are farther along in these areas than I am. So I'm not standing up here again as some, like, you know, I'm the master, and not at all. Um, in fact, let me, I'll say this further. So if you want to leave, you, can, you have this option right now. What I mean by that is, a lot of what I'm going to say tonight is really nothing new. I, I have no new insights about happiness. I'm not going to tell you anything you probably haven't heard before. But again, going back to C.S. Lewis, he makes the point that the Christian life isn't just about being instructed. A lot of it is about being reminded. So a lot of it is like just being reminded. That's why I will um, even listen to, uh, if a 12-year-old if a, a was up here preaching, I'm like, you know what, they're probably going to have something to say that I can be at least reminded. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, that's a good point. So that, that too, and that's another thing. I think that was my, my three little disclaimers there. Um, to remind you. I wrote down my little official piece of paper, <laughs> which on the other side it says bread, eggs, milk, <laughs> cheese, fabric softener. And so let's start off this way. If we're going to say happiness is, or what is happiness, just for a few minutes, let's talk about how the world sees it. And what I mean is, it's a, it's a pretty big playing field when I say the world, but let's say the American culture, apart from a, a Christian worldview, apart from Christianity. What's our culture saying, like, this is what it takes to be happy, or this is what happiness means. So let's talk amongst ourselves for, um, mm -hmm. what, maybe go five minutes? Is that, is that fair? Is that a fair amount of time? So let's go five minutes. Uh, we'll re, re, reconvene. At 8.55, is that clock correct? Yes. Okay, so at 8.55, we'll bring it back. 7.55, I was testing you. You have passed the first test. Ding. Uh, so 7.55. But just talk and, and refer to magazines, even billboards. There's so many different voices in the wind, so many different messages that we're bombarded with about what happiness is and how we get it. And so just for a few minutes, let's, let's get that going. We'll put that clay up on the table, and then we'll shape it. Shape it together. So, all right, let's go to it. Happiness to money, their money, their happiness, having a house, a job. Well, no, not just any old job. Not just any old house, not just any old car, but you want the best of the best. You know, it's about, for a lot of folks, it's about, look where I've achieved in life. This makes me happy. And I don't agree with it, but that's what a lot of people think. But then also, it becomes a point where they, they realize they can't get it. No, it's going to be a continuous pursuit. Like, let me get more stuff so that maybe I'll get happy. <laughs> but really, they're not. What about, like, for, let's say, sports players? They're not thinking, well, initially, they're not thinking of money or anything. Yeah, I think they are. That's why they get <laughs> Right? Yeah. But if, okay, let's say the salaries are less. Like, they're still going to want to Let's say it's instead of two million dollars, it's sixty thousand. Yeah, but it's a combination. It's not only the money; it's also the fame. It's a recognition. 
it's you know the fans. I mean, you got how many fans if you're Michael Jordan? You know, still. Yeah, see, that's another problem. Friends on Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. How many friends can I get? That's awesome. That's a great point. <laughs> I got 30 more friends than you, you know, I mean, it's like kind of a popularity. But, uh, okay, so how about this? So we're saying it's money, right? Well, it's a combination of money, fame, fortune. Because they're going to use their money for things. Sure. So it's not. But they're going to be influenced by the attention of fame, right? You know, when they get their face on lights, they got to look good. So how do they look good? They got to buy the yeah, they got to buy the right car because they don't want paparazzi taking pictures in a Toyota. You know, they want to be the Ferrari or the Benz or whatever. You know? It's always like, buy my It's all about an image. Yeah. 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 Of happiness? Yes. <laughs> happiness is... I'll say one aspect, I think, that... One aspect, I'm say. <laughs> let's say, a happy marriage, family. Yeah. As a part of the Christian viewpoint. Having a good church or something to go to. Go to. Fellowship. Fellowship. Um, okay. But charity. Charity. Yeah. Yeah. But see, everything we're saying about this issue is almost about others. I think now is it only about what we're doing? One minute warning. One minute that warning. Makes us happy? Because, like what you said, you know, let's say if I had money, the world would be happy. I could buy a car. And it seems like that's just me. Right? I can only speak for myself. I do what makes me happy. And I don't that, do things yeah. to make other people happy. Yeah. You know, I, I don't buy so, things to make other people happy. What about charity? <laughs> charity is a different story. That's to help people. Yeah, well, that's a different story. But that still makes me feel good. It makes me feel good, sure. <laughs> is there anything like that you can do by yourself? When no one's looking. Right, that's that makes you happy. I have to have coffee yeah. every day. <laughs> I think that's the personal like you know, that went back to that's your fellowship. Let's say not fellowship with your congregation, but it's like fellowship with your relationship. But then why don't you pursue it as Okay, party people in the house, let's bring it back. Here's what we'll do. We'll go around to each group, and I, whoever you decide to be, have the spokesperson, that's okay. And we'll just get one insight from each group and uh, see what we, uh, we all come up with. But only give one, so you're not stealing the thunder from another group, like you take all their answers. So who's, is there a, a brave group that wants to go first? Uh, yeah. Nice. Okay, what do you guys got? That's Alpha Team right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah money. Uh. <laughs> That's it? That's it? Everyone is like, that was our answer. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, that's the point. I mean, a lot of this I think we can answer right quickly. Here's the question. Is money, if I don't use this sometimes, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is money in and of itself evil? No. The love of it. Yeah, the love of it, right? Yeah, so not money in and of it. So then, so then what, what becomes the distorted or twisted way of viewing Money. Huh? The mindset of the person holding Yeah, the mindset of the person, like, I'm so bad with names. Some of you haven't even met yet. Sunny? Sunny? Okay, there we go. Uh, but like you just said to the love of what? right? Uh, the, the love of money, you said. That's key. So that's a very important distinction. Uh, not money, but the love of money. So good. Money? It took the top answer probably, but who wants to go second? 
I'm going to pick you if you don't volunteer. You're the top answer? <laughs> Okay, happiness is feeling satisfied. But can I, can, well, what, that wasn't your answer? Okay, what was your answer? <laughs> that concludes tonight's study. Good night, be warm, be fed. Vanit said women. You're in the wrong group, Vanit. <laughs> You get, uh, you get uh, to have uh, the, the, the red letter, the, the scarlet letter. No, um, so you said being satisfied, but let's take it a step further and be a little more specific. What would it take to get there, say from a worldly perspective? Money's one of those top candidates. What else? That was a good one, women. I mean. Well, that covers, yeah, because to be, what's that? Women. So women? <laughs> Whoa. All right, Whoa. one track mind, I'm just expressing what I While we're going around, please pray for this group. All right, so how about you guys? What did you put? Uh, we, we were talking more on, we also talked about the godly or Christian viewpoint. Of having well, first let's start off with worldly, um, and then we're, we're going to get to the godly. Same. <laughs> Fame, money. money. I mean, it kind of all ties in together. Yeah, oftentimes, right? Um, it's not. I mean, I guess you could have fame without money, and money without fame. But to have the, both of them together, come in, uh, <laughs> would be a nice, a nice combination in many people's eyes. What else? How about this? Because we're women, we have many different answers. But uh, one of ours was that. Uh, Physical beauty, physical perfection is very much pushed uh, in the world for, for women to be happy. You need uh, to be perfect. You need to look perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Happiness will be when I'm in a certain, I've reached a, a certain level of physical fitness or I look a certain way or hit a certain weight. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. I have a question for you all. First of all, those were all good answers. So you've hit a, a, a lot of the, the, the top candidates, the usual suspects. Can we think of an example from a worldly perspective of good things that become a source of happiness? But here's what I mean by that. Tim Keller, in his book, Counterfeit Gods, and other people have made this point too. He says one way to look at sin is when we make a good thing an ultimate thing. It's another form of idolatry. I mean, don't we know people who are not Christians, but yet are very loving to their families and aren't driven by money and fame? What might be their key to happiness? Well, we said one, family, but could, could we have good things that drive us too that aren't, that still, you know, not be a Christian? What do you all think of that? And this, this could be just, you know, jump in, yeah, charity. Okay. Look at Bill Gates. Yeah, I have no idea how much he gives away, but it's, it's, it's a, how much? Do you have any idea? Uh, probably billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even if it was millions, that still would be. But you're right, though. We hear about celebrities, whether it's Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie adopting another child or giving away a lot of money. This is Gates? Yeah. Wow. See, I, I didn't even know all of different foundations. Yeah, a lot. This is, and that's great stuff. These are good things that, that we say, gosh, Bill Gates, thank you for doing that. That's, that's valuable stuff. What other, right? What other, what was your name? Unity. Say it again. Unity. I need to practice that. Ah, uh, relationships. Ah. Be more specific. This is great. This is great. Like, what do you have in mind when you say relationships? Like my grandmother and me, or my uncle? Well, like, like spouses and families. Huh? Spouses and families. Yeah, spouses, family. Yeah, no, this is a great one. See, this is important. So, so charity work, great answer. Relationships. 
These are good things in and of themselves. But what's the view of it? A good thing made an ultimate thing, number one. Number two is doing these things brings some satisfaction, some pleasure. What, is that wrong? Is that not good? Is that inconsistent with the Christian worldview? We'll, we'll talk about that. Let's take one more if anyone has anything in mind. Charity, relationships. Charity, relationships, what else? Anything else come to mind? Being green. <laughs> oh, like environmental? <laughs> yeah, like it's back to the money part. <laughs> um, yeah, being, uh, speak more people, about that. People, I think, uh, take that to an extreme. And, you know, it's, uh, I think that you find joy in doing and being green. Yeah, and as Christians, are we called to be good stewards of as they say, the environment or earth. But is there a distinction still to be made between creature and creator? In other words, sometimes, does it ever seem like when people are really to, to an extreme, it almost seems like earth worship. Even saying mother earth. Now again, it doesn't mean like, oh, Christians shouldn't drive hybrids or, or recycle. No, it's not. It's, but it's what, again, a good thing made an ultimate thing. Much, much more can be said on this, but I have just a few quotes here. First two are from, uh, about people not from a Christian worldview. And I want to see if you can guess who this first one is. So what we're doing now is just, again, looking at a couple ideas of happiness. But gosh dang it, I, it seems to be rather slippery and elusive, this happiness idea. I wish everyone could get rich and famous and have everything they've ever dreamed of just so they can see that it's not the answer. This is someone who's alive now, who's very famous. I mean, it's going to be like, well, who, you know. If you've seen this quote before, this is actually someone you all know in this room, and you have laughed at many of his movies, I'm sure. Jim Carrey. Very good. Yeah, Jim Carrey said this in an interview. And I'm sure you can think of other people in other areas of life who have said similar notions that everything the world has to offer. What book in the Bible does that sound like? Everything the world has to offer, and yet still not satisfied, or still empty. Yeah, Ecclesiastes, right? That book was debated for a while. Like, should it be in the, in the, in the uh, Tanakh? Should it be in the Hebrew Scriptures? Because it seems to have a message that's odd, but then they realize the wisdom and the, the beauty of that. A life without God, that's the perspective in Ecclesiastes. He makes that distinction. Uh, when he says, everything under the sun, that's an earthly life. But then he... He sums it up at the end and saying, following God and keeping his commandments. This is referring to someone. When a reporter asked him, how much money is enough? He responded, just a little bit more. He would always answer that. Have you ever heard this? This, uh, this quote, who they're referring to when they would ask him? That Howard Hughes or no? It's along those lines. Someone along those lines? Uh -huh. If I understand correctly, he was the first American billionaire last, yeah. last century. John D. Rockefeller. He's a billionaire. How much is enough? Just a little bit more. Never stop chasing the tail on that one. You know when he died, they asked his accountant, how much did he leave behind? His accountant answered, all of it. Now, let's, let's make a little transition. But before we do, any thoughts, anything jump into your mind, like, oh, I want to share this, or comments, or questions, or... About any of Jim Carrey's movies, the plots. <laughs> no, there's many I haven't seen actually. He's hit or miss for me. I really either really like him in a movie or really don't like him. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Yes. <laughs> I sure. Okay, now let's let's make a transition and, and just start to put our feet into the water here as far as a Christian view of happiness. Famous quote here. You stir man, and this was written in the 4th century, so man is, is not the gender, but the species. You stir man to take pleasure in praising you, because you have made us for yourself. And our heart is restless until it rests in you. Any takers on that one? Same. Yeah, St. Augustine, or Augustine, your people say it both ways. 4th century, Christian philosopher, or Christian theologian and philosopher, the famous St. Augustine. Some of his uh, 
in his book, Confessions. It's actually in the opening paragraph of the book. So, so let's uh, make that transition, like I said, into Christian happiness. We mentioned C.S. Lewis. Um, if you space out for the rest of the night, or if you have to leave in five minutes, I put this up here on purpose. This is a, a chunky quote from Lewis, so bear with me. We'll look at it together. We covered it in Mere Christianity in uh, the Bible study. But it's really hard to beat Lewis as far as eloquence and oftentimes insights. So he's basically going to say everything that we're going to get to right here in this nice chunky quote. And this is what we're going to go for. And this means I get to, you know, I don't have to do as much work. I just let him do all the talking. Okay, C.S. Lewis on happiness. The moment you have a self at all, there's a possibility of putting yourself first. Wanting to be the center. Wanting to be God. Is there a way up? Sorry. There we go. Wanting to be God, in fact. That was the sin of Satan. And that was the sin he taught the human race. What Satan put into the heads of our remote ancestors was the idea that they could be like gods. Could set up on their own as if they had created themselves, be their own masters. Invent some sort of happiness for themselves outside of God. Apart from God. And out of that hopeless attempt has come nearly all that we call human history. Money, poverty, ambition, war, prostitution, classes, empire, slavery. The long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. <coughs> ah, I'm supposed to be oh. The reason why I can never succeed is this. God made us, invented us as a man invents an engine. A car is made to run on petrol and it would not run properly on anything else. Now God designed the human machine to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn, or the food our spirits were designed to feed on. There is no other. That is why it's just no good asking God to make us happy in our own way without bothering about religion. God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from himself, because it's not there. There is no such thing. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's, let's go back into our groups. And there's a lot up there. If I'm going to go back to the last screen, I'll do that. Maybe even think of scripture that comes to mind when, you, when contemplating stuff on this. But even before we go into our groups, let's go for about 60 seconds and just silently think about this. Meditate, pray. Go for about a minute, and then we'll uh, break off into the groups. So go and I'll say, okay, now we're going to your groups. So let's take a minute and mentally... Ponder, focus on that. 